All right, so the bus is officially sold. The new owner just took delivery of it, and I have a significant amount of money now. Unfortunately, it's also in a wad of cash, so I have to uh, deposit that into my bank. Anyways, I have all the empty space in my storage unit now, and I can actually get to my kayak and sailboat, so that's very exciting. As you can see, I have lots of stuff I need to clean out as well, so that's going to be a project for another day, though. Right now, I'm mostly concerned about just getting things paid off. Well, I'm looking at my kayak here. I was thinking about actually taking it out today, but uh, the varnish is flaking off. You can see it's basically gone off right there, and like a hole right there in it. That's not too surprising because last time I had this out, it was out on Alki Point, and I sorted it upside down on the patio out there outside my apartment. So it got a lot of sun and a lot of wear from all the salt water and everything. So I'm gonna have to redo the varnish on this, but it's still usable. I just don't wanna keep it outside until I get new varnish. All right, so I just stopped by the bank and deposited all that cash. It's always kind of scary carrying around that amount of money and cash on you but I'm glad it's gone. The other nice thing is that it showed up in my bank account basically immediately because it's cash and they can do that. So now I am completely free of credit card debt. I still have some loans that I obviously need to pay off, uh, but I have an emergency fund now and I have enough money that I can easily get to the East Coast and back no problem. So I think this trip is on. I actually just refilled the fuel on my car today as well. And for the first time in a long time, I paid under $4 a gallon. So that was really awesome. If the fuel prices keep dropping like this, it's obviously gonna be way cheaper for me to drive to the East Coast than it would be to fly. Well, I realized that I have some insurance paperwork for the bus that I need to uh, respond to. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but to cancel my insurance for my bus, I have to go to my mailbox down in Seattle. So it's a bit of a drive. So I'm gonna do lots of unnecessary driving today, but that's okay for a couple of different reasons. So the first reason I'm okay with all this random extra driving is because my car is almost due for an oil change. And at the rate I'm driving, it'll be about another month, month and a half before I'll actually get there. But I want to get my oil changed before I drive across the country, because driving across the country and back is basically worth one oil change. Another reason why I'm okay with putting some miles on my car today, or at least hours on my car, is because my fridge can't run off my Bluetti anymore because my Bluetti doesn't charge. Because that tiny little cable that came with it to charge it while I'm driving is now broken. Uh, it's just because it's too short and where the Bluetti is, just put way too much stress on it. And over a very short amount of time, it has broken. Also, my solar panels, uh, they do perform okay some of the time, but when it's hot out, like it has been earlier this week, it doesn't really charge my Bluetti enough to keep my fridge on. So again, I have to actually drive around a little bit just to keep my fridge running. So that's kind of silly, but I ordered a new cable for my Bluetti, which is much longer. And that should allow me to move my Bluetti into a much more secure location. So I stopped along the way to pick up these headphones that I had ordered off of Amazon. My old headphones actually broke. Uh, the plastic just got really brittle and was snapping off and they still sounded great, but yeah, not great. So I ended up getting what I thought was a very similar version, and it is basically the same, except these parts that go over your ears are really small. It still sounds just as good as my old ones, um, just kind of a weird size. It works though, and uh, personally, I think headphones are kind of a necessity when you live in a car. You don't really want to be attracting tons of attention to yourself by like watching YouTube videos at full volume in the back of your car. So glad I got these, they were really inexpensive, so not a huge deal. But now it's time to continue on down to Seattle. All right, so I picked up my mail. I have all the insurance information I need. Apparently I didn't really have to do much of anything, but I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't something that they needed me to do for insurance uh, before I called them. But anyways, I think I saved myself about $200 a month or so by selling that bus and paying off all those loans and everything. So that's another $200 a month that I can put towards other debt, which I'm very happy with. I know I say this every time I come to Seattle to pick up my mail or packages, but I really need to move my mailbox. So something I'm gonna to try to look into this weekend and hopefully I can get my mailbox moved to somewhere a little bit better than where I have it right now, because where I have it right now just isn't working for me very well. It's a long drive and the traffic is horrible. Right, so I'm gonna head back up north here, find a park to stop at, so I can call my car insurance company, get the bus insurance canceled, save myself a little bit of money there, and then see if I can put together some sort of plan for 
what I'm going to do next. I have to say that does look like a good time out there. I wouldn't mind trying kite surfing someday. That looks like a really good time. I just canceled my insurance for the bus, so that's another $35 a month that I saved. And so the bus is completely done now. I don't have any more paperwork to do with it, and it's just completely off my books. So that's uh, really exciting. Now I have to make plans for my trip at the end of August. So it looks like a trip from more or less where I am now to Boston, where my family is located, is going to be a 3,123 mile drive. And so it looks like I could probably do this in about four days, be about 780 miles a day, something like that. So that would be just over 10 hours of driving per day, maybe 11 hours. So that's not too bad. That would give me enough time to find places to stop and eat along the way, and also places where I can stop at rest stops. So I have my PTO requests in for my trip out to the East Coast. The car should be scheduled for maintenance as soon as I hear as soon as I hear back about that, the car should be scheduled for maintenance and I can get that done. Looks like getting that maintenance scheduled is super easy, so not too worried about that one. So in case you're wondering, this trip should cost me between $625 and $700 in fuel. Right now, airline tickets seem to be running about $550 to get there and back. And if I had flown, I would also have had to uh, rent a parking spot for my car. And I also know what tends to happen when I get to airports at the end and I end up getting stranded and have to Uber places or take public transit or something. It ends up costing me a ton of money just getting from one place to another. So ultimately it actually ends up costing probably close to the same, although it's just going to depend on the price of fuel. If fuel prices keep dropping like they have and it say cost me like 350 gallon and I end up closer to that $625 mark, um, this will definitely be cheaper than flying. But for me, because I live in my car and I have all my stuff here, just taking off and going is no big deal. I will have all my groceries with me and probably won't even have to buy any groceries outside of what I normally do. So this trip should be really affordable for me. On the plus side, also because I'm driving, I actually get to see lots of stuff along the way as opposed to flying where you don't, unfortunately. Well, I always like window seats and looking out the window. It's not quite the same as actually being on the ground and seeing what's out there. I also need to decide over the next couple of weeks whether I want to get my commercial learner's permit and take the truck driving route or not. I've been seeing opportunities for me to get my commercial driving license uh, nearby where my parents live out in Maine and there's a really good job out there that could really be worth it uh, but at the same time I would have to somehow live in my car or in a trailer or something in the winter in Maine which is definitely a whole lot colder than it is out here. Uh, so that would be something I have to consider. But uh, a lot of the jobs that I've seen doing this in the warmer climate states have kind of dried up recently. I'm not really sure why. Maybe it's because they had the same thought that I did. But still, I'm keeping my eye out uh, for potential opportunities to get my commercial driving license. I think that might end up being the best way for me to pay off this debt as fast as possible. But we'll see what happens and I'll be thinking about this for the next couple of weeks. So I'm really happy that I got so much of that debt paid off, especially that high interest stuff. It's just absolutely horrible having that around. I still have plenty more to go. Um, I have my trip planned and I have a pretty good idea of what I'm going to be doing once I come back from that trip. Although uh, that's going to be up in the air for the next couple of weeks. Lots to think about. So be sure to subscribe if you want to watch this trip. And also comment down below if you have any good ideas of how to get a Class A commercial learner's permit. Thinking if I start crunching the numbers now again, I may actually be able to pay off this debt faster than I had originally thought. So uh, that's just something that I need to think about. So comment down below uh, if you have any good ideas of how to get that uh, Class A commercial license in a really affordable way.